Hello everyone and welcome back to this channel. Happy December! We did have a little bit of snow yesterday in Boston, but sadly it has all disappeared. It looked so festive and so great for all of like two hours and then it started raining and now it's all gone and I am bummed. But nonetheless, got me in the festive like cozy season kind of mood and made me realize that I haven't actually planned that much about what I'm going to read in the month of December. <laughs> So this is what that video is going to be. This is my uh, kind of mm, TBR planning for December that I might end up just completely trashing and uh, mood reading my way through the holidays. So don't hold me to this, but this is what I'm thinking. I have a couple of books that I had started at the end of, or even not at the end of, but during November. So I'm planning to read these guys. So I have Life Undercover, Coming of Age in the CIA by Amaryllis Fox. I got this at the American Library Association conference, like I did with a lot of these books, so you can see those videos if you're interested in those. But I got it signed. This came out in October, and it's the true story of Amaryllis Fox, who trained and worked undercover for the CIA for eight years. It also covers kind of her marriage, um, the birth of her daughter, and like how her daughter has to deal with her mom being a spy, and just all of that, all of her thoughts while undercover, kind of, I, I, I'm assuming it has something to do also with the viral video that she put out about, you know, compassion and how to talk to people on the other side that like the the goals that both sides have are like safety for their children and peace and like a couple of other things and like those are like their base goals that people can usually agree on even if they picture them differently and and put the blame on the other side so I'm really excited about this one I wish that I had read it before I gave it to my uncle but I was being a very good niece and he was a he worked in politics basically for his entire life. I think when he was like 19 or 20 is when he started and he's just now kind of taking a break from it. He was also a political consultant in um, Europe for a while so I knew this would be right up his alley and he really really enjoyed it so based on his review and based on my own excitement for this book I, I'm just really glad that I get to read it now. So this one I'm definitely definitely gonna read in December. And probably finish. I have the bad habit of just starting way too many books all at once and then like eventually finishing a couple of them. So this one is another kind of holdover from Nonfiction November and I've been meaning to read it forever because I think everyone who has read it has absolutely loved it and it is The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. Got worried for a second, I said his name wrong. By Eric Larson. So because this is so well known, I'm probably not going to do any like big review on it or anything, but it is really, I don't know, it's, that, it's one of those stories that you hear so much about and you don't know what is like kind of creepypasta based on history and what is real. So I'm really interested to read it, uh, read the rest of it from this like well known, esteemed, Bio or not, not biographer, but historian. Ugh. The fact that it is a history book but became so critically and like publicly acclaimed is crazy to me. This is the true story of the Chicago World's Fair, the architects who built and created, and the serial killer who was operating during that time, who is uh, A.J. Holmes. So I only know a little bit of that story. Um, obviously it's kind of made its way into the um, memory of our country, uh, into uh, pop culture, onto podcasts, those kind of things. So I'm really interested to actually go back and see like, I feel like this was the source material for a lot of that craze that came up in the last couple of years. Obviously it's a story that's captured imagination for a long time, but I think it's since the publication of this book that we've really seen it uh, in like, American Horror Story and My Favorite Murder, the two like big names that come to mind. Let me know your thoughts if that's wrong. But I'm excited to finally read it. And what I've read so far has been so well written and it's very 
cool to see how he melds together almost novel style writing of like this is what the person is feeling this is what's going on and direct quotes from actual materials that he used for research so i'm i'm really excited about that one <laughs> Another one that I started in November is Girl Waits with Gun by Amy Stewart, and this is the first of the Cop Sisters, like, collection of stories, I guess. I don't know if it's going to be a trilogy or more than that. And I, so far, I'm really enjoying this one. It does feel a little bit like a Agatha Christie novel transplanted into the Wild West. <laughs> so that's pretty fun. Um, it's three sisters. Uh, who are living together on a farm. They get into a car accident within like, or a um, horse-drawn carriage accident with a car <laughs> within the first chapter or first two chapters. The three sisters have very different personalities. Um, their mother has died, she is deceased. Their brother lives with his wife and like their family and is constantly like stepping in and worrying about them because, you know, three women living alone. Whew. The youngest sister's kind of um, funny and like fashionable and doted on by her older sisters, even if they're trying not to make her a spoiled brat. Um, Constance, I don't remember if Constance is the oldest or the middle sister, but it doesn't really matter. Constance is the main narrator. She is like large and strong and in charge and like gets all up in the face of the guy who hit them and he runs a big old company and might be like this kind of hooligan slash mob boss person and she's trying to get him to pay and now he's threatening them and it's just this whole thing and I'm really excited to see how it all wraps up. Their last sister, she's kind of a homebody. Um, she likes birds and like carrier pigeons and things like that and will like release them and send them back with just like headlines very pointed like headlines to her sisters that seem really funny to me basically i i think it's a really fun novel i'm excited for this one it's been pretty acclaimed um and my co-worker actually picked this up for me when she went to she had a day off it was a saturday and it was the um boston public library monthly bi-monthly every other monthly <laughs> book sale and she picked this up for me, read it herself first because she realized that uh, it sounded great and then actually gave it to me like a month later. So I'm very excited to finish this one and hopefully end up liking the last like two thirds as much as I like the first third. I, okay, let's see what else do we got here. But yesterday I finished Stacking Jack the, R Jack the Ripper which counts as like a book that I planned to read in November and finished on like the 1st of December. But I think I have a an unpopular opinion about that book, so I'm definitely going to do a review on it and the whole James Patterson Presents thing, even though it was written by Carrie Manis Galco. Like, his name is very clear on this, and hers is not, which I disagree with. Just for starters. <laughs> okay, so then, on my Kindle, I do also have a couple of other things. So I have some Net Galilee ones that I've been meaning to read. I got Western Woman by Sandra Dallas, The Giver of Stars, which, I mean, you've seen everywhere, Jojo Moyes. Um, where did it go? There was definitely more than this. The Will in the Wilds by Charlie Holmberg. Just those three? Oh, and The Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. So, that's already a lot <laughs> for me, personally. Um, I also have a couple of holds coming through shortly in um, on the Libby app. I have the audiobook for The Book of Dust coming in by um, La Belle Sauvage, Philip Pullman. Then in two weeks, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, the audiobook for that is going to be coming in. And in uh, two weeks, I also have the audiobook for Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts. And the ebook for The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones, which I've been really excited for. So 
you see what I mean that this is kind of getting out of control. <laughs> I have all of these things that I want to read, all of these things that I kind of need to read for, for NetGalley. I also have um, two proofs that are coming up on their uh, publication date. So these ARCs, which is the Creatures by Chrissy Van Meter, which is what I'm hoping it is what I wanted from the Monsters of Templeton by Lauren Groff because it they're on an island there's a wedding about to happen that doesn't happen in the Groff novel but you know what I mean like there's a wedding the dad and the daughter have kind of a strange relationship her mom randomly shows up out of nowhere even though her mom has not been part of her life for a really long time okay was there also a monster yeah a dead whale trapped in the harbor of Winter Island so Dead Whale kind of translates to the dead monster in the Monsters of Templeton. Um, in the Monster of Templeton, it's the father that she doesn't know that well uh, and has to kind of figure out who he is. This one, the mom who hasn't been part of her life for a really long time, just shows up again. And I am just really hopeful for it. And it's also kind of small, so I'm hoping I'll be able to squeeze this one in, even though I have a lot going on with the rest of it. Then we have followers by Megan Angelo. I have been hearing such great things about this and I haven't been able to read that much of it so far because I've got 15 other things going at once. So this one, uh, the date it's going on sale is January 14th. So I'm going to try to squeeze this one in. It's pretty fast paced. Um, it goes back, back and forth between like the modern day and then in the future where social media stars are like created, funded, and like run by the government, which kind of sounds like K-pop to me. I'm not gonna lie. So I don't know if it's really that far in the future. I just, this one, okay, this one sounds really, really good and I've been hearing so much hype about it and I wanna read it before the pub date and then probably send it to a friend I, uh, because she didn't get her hands on it. And I just, oh, there's so much hype and I wanna read it so bad. <laughs> um, and if I manage to get through all of that, so many things. I also have The Girl Who Reads on the Metro. This is an advanced reader copy. It's been out for a while. It took them a really long time to send it to us because it was a giveaway win for me, which is a modern day fairy tale where like people and books get matched up in the world in Paris on the train. And like, I, it, oh, it's everything I love. So I've read some of this in French. I haven't finished it in French, but I'm looking forward to reading it in English because the French version keeps getting checked out from the library. And I feel bad about hoarding it. So I let people check it out and then I haven't finished it. And it'll be interesting to compare like the French versus the uh, English translation because sometimes they don't get that right. But it's recommended for fans of Amélie, the movie, and the Little Paris Bookshop, which I have not read yet, but I have somewhere in this room. And I'm just very excited for it. Again, this is another like really short one, so hopefully I'll be able to rip through that one pretty quickly. And last but not least, I have been meaning to read this forever, and I'm kicking myself for not doing so during Nonfiction November, but Say Nothing, A True Story of Murder and Memory in Northern Ireland by Patrick Radden Keefe. So this has been nominated but for so many awards for like best nonfiction, um, book you should read in 2019 kind of thing, and I am fascinated by the whole... Northern Ireland debacle and everything that happened um, between the two different religions and the tensions that remain to this day and it's just bananas. So this is also kind of... I am also interested in this because when I was at Boston College there was this whole thing that came out that BC had conducted interviews with people who had murdered others during the troubles and had told them that they would keep their stories quiet until after their death so that they wouldn't be prosecuted and you know uh, just because you're a Jesuit institution does not mean that you get to kind of give a blanket statement of like and we're just gonna say this took place in the confessional just tell us everything so that we have the research later and we can publish a book about it once you're dead. So there was this whole thing going on and like people were arguing both sides saying like of course they can say this and like heck no they can't these people need to be prosecuted and it was like a whole thing. So I don't know if this book covers that at all but I'm just really really interested in that. So it is, let's see, it's 
talking about the abduction and murder of Jean McConville, uh, which is one of the most notorious and uh, episodes of the vicious conflict known as the Troubles. And it's talking about like the IRA and the whole feel of the time and everything that goes on around it. And I am just very, very excited for it. <laughs> And I mean, I, I mean, this has been so hyped, like I said, so I don't think you really need my point of view to tell you to read it, but I'm really excited for it and I'm probably going to write like a full research paper once it's done because, wow, ah, oh, it's so interesting. Okay, what else, what else did I put on this that I haven't talked about yet? Oh, I guess I should mention why I picked these um, net galley raids now. So, The Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. I am such a huge Jane Austen fan. I think she is such a badass. And if I'm ever having a bad day and, like, need some comfort beyond just, like, going for a run or, like, if it's raining and I can't go on my run, then I will read Jane Austen. I will read Pride and Prejudice mainly. I've read Emma during that, like, during those kind of emotionally distraught moments. I will watch the Pride and Prejudice ad adaptations. I just love, I love, I love the world that she creates and I love the creativity that she continues to inspire. All right, I have my laptop so I can remind myself about exactly what these neck alleys are because I uh, put in for them, which feels like so long ago, and I just completely forgot. Yeah. All right, so the Jane Austen Society, for some reason the covers are not coming through on my Night Galley proofs. Is that a normal thing? But it has a beautiful cover on Night Galley. All right, so we have an odd group of people who come together to save Jane Austen's final home, which was in Chawton, England. And it's kind of fallen to into disrepair and it's like a diminishing estate owned by some of her relatives who are still living at the end of the Second World War. So we have then a laborer, a young widow, the local doctor, and a movie star among like some other people who come together and try to save this house and her legacy um, based on their own love and appreciation for Jane Austen's work. So... That sound, it seems kind of like slice of life e with a, an added dose of Austin. So I'm into that. I'm excited about it. The Will and the Wilds by Charlie N. Holmberg also has a gorgeous cover. We've got a girl kind of in the woods, but her color, like the color scheme, kind of makes it seem like she's part of the woods, and like I just like that a lot. <laughs> this one seems kind of like modern day or maybe not modern day based on the dress she's wearing but like twisted fairy tale maybe yes okay but twisted fairy tale in the way that it is twisted both for the girl anna and for the mysterious misting is apparently what they're calling them in this, which I'm assuming is kind of a fairy, named Macalus or Makalus. Um, so he kisses her to steal her soul and then he's bound to the mortal realm, which starts killing him. So there's this like weird catch-22 situation where now even though he's stolen her soul with a kiss, true love's kiss will save him. Maybe. And because he's got her soul now, he feels things for the first time and it's problematic and he doesn't know how to do that. So, um, there we go. I, should be interesting. <laughs> and that one uh, is going to be published on the 21st of January. The Jane Austen Society is not going to be published until May, so I do have some time for that. Westering Women is another one that I picked up, and that one's going to be published on the 7th of January, so I should probably read that one first. 
And this one is by Sandra Dallas. We've got kind of a windswept moment happening on the cover. There she is. And we are in 1852 around Chicago. Uh, and she is traveling to the gold mines. She's a single mother. She's doing a 2000 mile journey west. And she and all of the women who kind of are going to answer this call for eligible women um, have to band together and do this whole thing and do this whole journey and survive it and get there and protect each other and who knows, maybe find a husband at the end of that? Is that what they're going for? I have a lot of questions. I'm ready to have them answered. And then I don't know if I really need to explain The Giver of Stars to anybody because this has been all over the place and it's already been published. It was published on the 8th of October. Um, I didn't really know that NetGalley did this, where they let you read things after they have been published, but I am really excited for this one. It's not only a Reese Witherspoon book club pick, it is also based on the true story of some badass librarians who took to horseback to bring books to people who would not have them otherwise in, I think this is another like Wild West kind of story. I don't know what is going on in um, my net galley choices lately, but I'm super excited for this. I have never read Jojo Moyes because I don't love romances but this seems like it's based more in like these women and their lives and like she's the main character seems kind of chill with leaving her husband to go uh be a librarian on horseback so i, I don't know what to do with that so we're gonna read a lot <laughs> this month i have a lot of time off from work so hopefully i'll be able to actually accomplish more of this than i am thinking but yeah how many is that even okay so that's a lot for me that is 15 um non-fiction fiction and audiobooks that i am hoping to get to in december i feel like i should sign off and go get started so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to let me know uh by giving it a thumbs up or hitting subscribe or however you let people know what are you planning on reading this December? Let me know down below or like shoot me a link to your, your video if you're doing this too. I am looking for booktube friends, help me. <laughs> and yeah, I hope you guys like this enough to come back for another video at some point. And until I see you next, I hope you have a great reading month. Bye.